Welcome to Houston and beautiful Minute Maid Park. The Blue Jays are on a great road trip. They won six of the seven games so far. They won the opener here last night, six to five, and pounded out four home runs. Nolan Rimo with a game winner in the ninth inning. The Blue Jays have had a terrific month of hitting in July. They hit 281 as a team, second only to the Detroit Tigers, and the lineup is red hot right now. Take a look at the lineup for tonight's game. We're going to look at the lineup first in Dunedin tonight and see that Brett Laurie is back in the lineup and he's off to a good start. He's got a hit, a walk. He's scored two runs already. And you look at Laurie, top of the order. Cole Gillespie's also on a rehab assignment. And Roberto Osuna made the start coming back from Tommy John. That's a good sign with Brett Laurie. They're going to play him at second base. He'll play third base tomorrow. They'll go back and forth. And John Gibbons thinks that that might be the spot that when he gets back here to the major leagues, they're going to try him at second. They're going to try him at third base wherever they need him. Pretty much what he did before he got injured that day in Cincinnati. We got hit by that pitch. So Brett Laurie back in the lineup. And I assume it's going to take a couple of weeks for him to get his batting high and get his timing back at the plate. He's been out since the last week of June and he needs some at bats. There's no question about that. Jay Happ will start tonight. As the Astros take the field, let's take a look at the Blue Jays on the lineup. Jose Reyes, a couple of hits in last night's game. He's the off man. And how about Melky Cabrera? He just continues to rack up the hits. He had a hit last night, and when you look at Cabrera since the break, he's hit over 400 with 10 extra base hits, and he's driven in 14. Part of this big second half surge for the Blue Jays at 11 and 3 since the break. And then down in the cleanup spot is Deanna Navarro on the road trip. He's 10 for 26. That home run last night, his first hit on the road this season. And it tied the game up in the sixth inning at four all. He has been a pleasant surprise with the bat. Yeah, what a move by John Gibbons to put him in the cleanup spot, and he's knocking in some big runs for the Blue Jays. Tonight they will face 27-year-old right-hander Colin McHugh. We'll get the ball tonight for the Houston Astros. He'll be trying to break a six-game losing streak. He last won on June the 3rd. You can see the opponent's batting average. Righty's just 190, lefty's 213. That goes out to a 202 batting average against. He struck out 102 batters in 88 and two thirds innings. He missed three weeks in the month of July due to a loose nail on his throwing hand. And this is the first time that the Jays have had a look at Colin McHugh. Take a look at the defense behind McHugh. LJ Hose was in right last night. He's in left tonight. Jake Marisnik makes his debut with the Astros. He's a former draft pick for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's in the center. Robbie Grossman is in right tonight. On the infield is Dominguez and Petit on the left side. Altuve and Guzman on the right side. And behind the plate, switch hitting Carlos Corporan takes over tonight. And he'll call the pitches for Colin McHugh. We have heard so much about Jake Marisnik's defense prowess in the outfield. We always thought it would be for the Blue Jays, but here he is facing his former team. He'll get the start out here in center field. For the Houston Astros. Marisnik is 23 years old. He was a Blue Jays third round pick in 2009, and he was part of the six Blue Jay players they sent to Miami in November of 2012. In return, they got Jose Reyes, among others, and Reyes is going to lead things off tonight. Jose, with a great month of July under his belt, he had 36 hits in the month of July. And he's done a good job. He and Melky Cabrera, one, two in the lineup, have given the Blue Jays an awful lot of run scoring opportunities. Those two have the two highest hit totals for the Blue Jays in the month of July. First pitch is outside from McHugh. Austin Jackson, who just went from Detroit to Seattle, had 38 hits. He was first in the American League in hits for July. There's a strength. But Ray has been a great table setter. He scored a run in the eighth inning on a sack fly by Jose Bautista. Outside, McHugh has made some adjustments, formerly of the Mets. He went to Colorado for a while, but he used to be a sinker ball pitcher. He's different now. Yeah, he was sinker slider before, but they got him in spring training. Brett Strom says, let's go four seam a little bit more. So you've got the four seamer and more curveballs for the strikeout pitch. So he's a different pitcher than with the. Scouting report has put up. There's Brett Strong, pitching coach for the Astros. Oftentimes you'll see a pitcher's arm angle and say, you know what, he should be a curveball pitcher. There's a high changeup that 
is upstairs. It's now a full count. McHugh was an 18th round pick of the Mets in 2008. He was traded from New York to Colorado for Eric Young in 2013. Bouncing ball two Hopper to the second baseman now two there and Reyes is retired one down. Well we mentioned the transition but McHugh still has a wide assortment of pitches he can use to attack the lineup. He'll use that fastball 45 percent of the time at four four seamers and it's going to be up in the strike zone like that last one that Jose Reyes Blue Jays are going to have to be disciplined to lay off of that slider curveball that is probably his best pitch. Matters hitting just 094 against that curveball this year, right over the top. And you talk about arm slots and arm angles. He's got a good arm angle for that curveball, right over the top. Okay, Cabrera takes a first pitch strike. Cabrera, netting 404 since the All Star break, that boosted his average to 313. I think two Amanda Bujes all got re-energized with the four-day break at the All-Star break. Everybody was dragging as they made their way into the break. Injuries get nicked up. If you look forward to those four days off, and I'll tell you, just mentally getting those days off will do a lot for you. Colin Rimo went into the All-Star break on the DL. Yeah, he had a big night last night with a couple of home runs. Breaking ball. There's a first hit of the ball game. Melky Cabrera sat back like he knew that hook was coming. Yeah, he might have got a little bit of help from the catcher. Watch what he does here. Carlos Corpor and he says, okay, give me that curveball down there as a hitter. You can sense that. And you can put in the back of your mind, you might get a curveball. That's right over the top. Good curveball. And Melky handles it easily. Well, that's a great point, Pat. I've never seen a catcher ask for a fastball in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're the hit leaders in the American League. Out to be 10 ahead of Melky Cabrera, who has 141. Jose Bautista homered in the first in last night's game. He and Andrew Jones are tied with 10 first inning home runs this season. They have both really put on a show in the first inning and they will be matched up Tuesday night at Rogers Center when the Orioles come to town for a three game series. Blue Jays had a seesaw game last night Bautista put him ahead early. And then it was back and forth as the Astros scored three in the third to take a 4 2 lead. entertaining game last night, especially with the Blue Jays winning it. And I talked to some of the Blue Jay personnel today. And a game like that on a day, what happened yesterday, some of the guys were kind of frisky to begin with. If you lose that ball game, boy, that will be a tough one to bounce back from. Look out, up and in, and Bautista just barely got out of the way. Colin McKee a little bit wild here early on. Trying to run that fastball up and in. Jose is able just to get out of the way. I don't know how he missed it. Three balls in his strike, Melky Cabrera at first. Swing and a drop. This one is hit hard. It's going to be off the scoreboard. Melky Cabrera is around second. He's headed for third. Bautista will stop at first. As Bautista hit it so hard, he knocked the number off the scoreboard. Cabrera goes first to third on the single by Bautista. Keanu Navarro in the cleanup spot has done a terrific job. He had his first road home run here last night. And you look at his post break party pre All Star game. He played 82 games at a 260 average, but it's really jumped after that four day break. Yeah, the average has gone up 100 points, and the power has gone up. His on base plus slugging has gone up also about 340 points. Uh, Navarro. Put in that cleanup spot and he has responded. Now he's had a lot of opportunities because the top of the lineup, Reyes, Cabrera, and Bautista hitting in front of him, they seem to be always on base. So he has come up in these situations and he's come through for him. He has 46 RBIs for the season. That's just eight off of his career high. He drove in 54 in his All Star season with Tampa Bay in 2008. 
And he has had a terrific season so far. At the plate, he just looks very comfortable. His swing is very short right now. Off the plate. Two and out. And when you're seeing the ball the way he's seeing the ball right now, you can lay off of those borderline pitches right there. Those were a couple of tough ones. An anxious hitter might have swung at those and grounded the ball to second or third base for a double play. He lays off of them. The Blue Jays went 12 and 15 in June. And they bounced back with a 15 and 11 record in July. There's a drive to the outfield. Jake Marisnik has good speed. He runs it down and tagging it third is Melky Cabrera. Marisnik is a terrific outfielder, a big guy that can really cover a lot of ground. But Yana Navarro picks up another RBI. That's number 47 for the Blue Jays catcher. They were actually playing Navarro the other way. Marisnik in center field, shading him to that gap in left center field. You can see him at the top of your your screen right there, and this ball is slicing away from him. Excellent break, athletic move to run that one down, but it's a sacrifice fly. Blue Jays with a one nothing lead. Nolan Rymel, a two homer game last night, moves up into the fifth spot. Rymel just starting to feel good once again. He joined the Blue Jays right before the All Star break. Did a good job. He drove in three runs with three doubles, and then he got hurt. Went on the DL. And then had the fight to get his timing back. And he said uh, the other night when he was in Boston, he pinched hit and ended up striking out against Andrew Miller and then struck out his first time up yesterday. So the timing just wasn't there, wasn't seeing the ball. Got a pitch to hit his second time up and unloaded it to left field. Yeah, that's a good assignment. Hey, get in it back. Go up there and hit against Andrew Miller. He's only throwing 97 right now. Good luck. <laughs> Brilliant move by John Gibbons because everybody else after him, the ball's going to look like a softball. Two and one to Rymel. Two outs. Checks his swing. Now it's a 3 1 count. Rymel started his career in the Orioles organization. He was a second round pick in 2005. And he's dealt with some serious injuries. Three and one, two outs. There's a fly ball into center. Marisnik to his left gets there. The inning is over, but the Blue Jays score early. They score a run on two hits, and Navarro with an RBI. Jose Bautista set the table. He drives this off the scoreboard and left. A long single. Blue Jays with a one nothing lead. For tonight's game, Jose Altuve, top of the order, has got 151 hits this season. That leads the major leagues. The Blue Jays did a great job of keeping him off the bases last night. They walked him intensely in the sixth. He took an 0 for 4 overall in that ball game, and then down in the sixth spot in the order. 
Your sitting catcher, Carlos Corcoran, is behind the plate tonight. He's hit 333 over his last nine games with three doubles and five RBIs. He gives Jason Castro the night out. Marisnik, the former Blue Jay, in the seventh spot. He's in center field tonight. Acquired in a trade yesterday at the trade deadline. That is a lineup that Jay Happ will face. Spent parts of three seasons with the Houston Astro Astros before being traded to the Blue Jays before the trade deadline in 2012. He makes his first start back here in Houston. Last time out, no decision for Jay. About three runs, four hits, pitching into the sixth inning in his career. He's made two career starts versus Houston's 2-0. Last time facing them in 2010 when he was a member of the Phillies organization. Jose Altuve takes the first pitch downstairs. Altuve leads the American League, leads the majors in hits 151. He also leads in stolen bases. So that's important to keep him off the bases. And he is a free swinger. Free swinger. He'll go up there hacking away, and the Blue Jays are going to play him straight up. Because he can hit the ball from foul line to foul line, you just can't put people on one side of the infield. That is about straight up as you can get right there for the defense. Swings right through that fastball. That's always been J Hap strength. Hitters don't see that fastball. It's really what they refer to as a sneaky fastball. Kind of lulls you to sleep with a very smooth delivery and then that fastball gets on. You. And it looks so inviting, especially up in the strike zone. That's why Altuve went after that one. It just looks like you can hit that ball nine miles. But you end up fouling it back or swinging right through it. There's a drive to center and that is a graveyard out there in center field. Kobe Rasmus makes the catch. He's back in center tonight. Jay Happ has eight wins this season and. He has been good or real bad. <laughs> That's basically how it goes. Uh, when you pitch well, you win. When you don't pitch well, you usually lose. But when he pitches to win, his ERA is just over two. He holds the bonus to a 242 batting average, and he keeps the ball in the ballpark. Blue Jays made some changes last September to his release point. They dropped his arm out, arm angle down just a little bit. And I think that has really helped him to stay in the strike zone. I think it's made his breaking ball a lot better. I think it's also made his change up a lot better. Robbie Grossman lost the grip on that bat and went back to the screen. Grossman, a switch hitter batting right handed. Grossman had a good night last night. He had a couple of hits in his first two at bats, walked twice. He was on base four times for the night. There's another fastball just 93 miles an hour. It's not going to light up the radar gun, but it's very effective. He's got a lot of life on him. Yeah, well, watch where the batters foul it off too. right handers down the right field line left handers down the left field line against Jay. They're just not seeing that fastball. As Pat mentioned Jay Happ pitched over parts of three seasons here with the Astros a total of 59 starts he had an 18 and 28 record while pitching for Houston. Blue Jays got him at mid season in a trade that included Brandon Lyon they sent a boatload of prospects to Houston in exchange that took place July 20th of 2012. There's another fly ball. This one into right center. Bautista cruises over and makes the catch. Two down. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2014 Honda Civic, Canada's best selling car 16 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. And by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Minute Maid Park right in downtown Houston next to the highway as you can see it's a retractable roof stadium that has been closed in these first two games of this series Chris Carter batting number three tried to check and went around. Legitimate home run threat in the lineup for the Houston Astros it is Chris Carter. He's hit him up there before up on the train tracks. 
Chris Carter, a big power guy, and something happened with Deon and Navarro. He may have asked for time. He looked like he turned around the umpire and said, Wait a minute, I'm not quite set here. Chris Conroy is a home plate umpire. Looks like Navarro's having some trouble with his vision, or maybe some shadows in center. I think you're absolutely right. We just had a shot of the sun shining through the glass in left field. Something is reflecting and prohibiting him from seeing the ball. There's the shot right there of the sun shining through here. Oh, and two, two outs. Half strikes him out. The ball gets away from Navarro. He takes his time, throws the first to complete the strikeout. Three up, three down for Jay Happ. Blue Jays after one with a one nothing lead here in Houston. Has advanced to the semifinals in the ATP 500 Series City Open in Washington. He'll play tomorrow at 3 p.m. in the afternoon against Donald Young. He'll be on four Sportsnet channels. And, and now it is on one. So if you want to see the possible, will play later tonight. And there's lots of tennis action going on. Of course, the Rogers Cup coming up next week. And Milos Raonic is the sixth seed in the Rogers Cup. He is likely to start his play on Wednesday. Raonic, of course, because he's seeded sixth, will get a first round bomb. Well, you can see the mound is a concern. Jay Happ was cleaning the mud out from his spikes, and now the ground screw is out. But there's been some issues here. I think Navarro had some problems with reflections. Out in center field somewhere. When he went back to the dugout, he was explaining and he couldn't see. And now he's seeing there tamping down that clay in front of the pitcher's rubber. Yeah, before the start of the first, uh, the bottom of the first inning, had a shot of Bo Porter out talking to the home plate umpire like there was something wrong, something amiss. And it looks like it might have to do now with the mound. Damp, wet, muddy. Yeah, and obviously the mound is not a concern during batting practice because nobody steps on it. And then they get it all prepared for the game action. They'll come out and water the infield, drag the infield, and then they'll address the mound situation. And Nick Hugh didn't have any problems with it in the first. It didn't appear as though he did. Jay Happ breezed through his half of the first. Brent Strong out to make sure the mound is stable for his pitcher. Home plate umpire Chris Conroy out there to making sure that everything is okay up to his satisfaction. You can see it seems to be pretty firm right now. That's a lot of dirt and mud and gook on the bottom of those shoes for the first two innings of this ball game. Remember, we're playing indoors, so there's no rain, none of that factor. And it looks like they might have watered down the mound just a little bit too much before the, the game tonight. 
Look at those uh, shoes. Yeah, he is. It's really pretty wet, and it's unfortunate. You can see how much mud was caked onto Jay Hamps' spikes. But it seems to be they got a little bit overzealous with the watering tonight. Now they're going to try to get some more of that mud off. Well, Danny Valencia waits while McHugh loosens up, and Rasmus will bat first and then Valencia. You know what that is? That spray? Yeah. Pam. Pam. Mm -hmm. Kitchen spray. Non stick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would make him slide. You don't want him sliding off. No, you just don't want the mud on your spike so they can do their job. Those trainers, they think of everything. I Mike Frostad, he is right ready to help out with anything. He's working like a shoe shine guy. He's just like that Wiley Coyote guy. He's got a box from Acme Hardware. <laughs> <laughs> now we're set. Kobe Rasmus will lead things off in the second. A pitch outside. Rasmus, of course, was scratched from the lineup last night. The story came out. In Kobe's words, I was late and I should have been punished. The foul back. It's a ball on the strike. John Gibbons, he took credit for just being a managerial genius. He said, No, I just knew that Rymo was going to hit two home runs and I made the change. <laughs> yeah, somebody knew something right there. It worked out for the Blue Jays. No Nolan Ryan in the lineup last night. This ball is drilled to right. That's going to get down for a base hit. Kobe Rasmus gets a leadoff single. Blue Jays are 11 and 3 since the All Star break, and they are 6 and 1 on this road trip. And this looked like a daunting road trip. New York, Boston, and Houston. And they lost the first game of the road trip on Friday night in New York and bounced back and won the next day. And they haven't lost since, including a 14 to 1 drumming of the Red Sox in the opener on Monday night. They swept Boston. And now they've taken the first game of this series in Houston. It's starting to hit as a team a 300 average and home runs four more home runs last night getting professional at bats from the players that they picked up lately like this guy right here Danny Blitz has had some good at bats and Nolan Ryan will is that good at bats. Danny Valencia has an aggressive swing Valencia last night had a double and a single he also struck out twice. For the season, batting 284 when you combine his numbers with the Royals and the Blue Jays. Off the plate. One and two. Valencia got a lot of playing time early in the season when Mike Mustakas, the Kansas City third baseman, really struggled and they sent him to the minor leagues. Valencia got an extended period of playing time. It's always been a solid big leader now playing some first base for the Blue Jays. He started a beautiful double play in last night's ball game at third base. That was in the fourth inning. He made a backhanded stab threw it to Ryan Goins at second who really made a heck of a turn on the double play. That ended the inning and got Todd Redman out of his first inning of work. Rasmus will dive back in ahead of the throw. Colby three for three in steals. All of his steals have been after the All Star break. He didn't have an attempt in the first half. They think enough of him though that they'll give him a green light at, at times, but uh, just hasn't taken advantage of that. There's a ball drilled down the left field line. That's a fair ball up against the wall. Rasmus is headed for a third. He's going to be stopped there. Danny Valencia with another double. Valencia's seventh double of the season and the Blue Jays are cooking here in the second. You know you mentioned that he struck out a couple of times last night and they were on breaking balls. Strike two was a breaking ball then he never threw him another one. Tries to throw a fastball by a fastball hitter. That's not going to work. With two strikes into the corner looked like Rasmus had a chance to score but Lou Rivera throws up the stop sign. Blue Jays back in business. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead threatening to add to it here in the second. Mudanori Kawasaki got a much needed off day yesterday. He's played a lot 
recently and John Gibbons felt like he needed a little bit of a blow. Blue Jays, Kawasaki takes one outside. Blue Jays had four batters hit 300 in the month of July. Regulars. I'm not talking about a guy who had 10 at bats. Guys who had consistent at bats in the month of July. Munanori was one of them who hit over 300 in July. 23 for 75. A lot of at bats. Mooney had three doubles and he drove in six runs. He also scored eight in the month of July. Melky Cabrera hit 356 for the month. Reyes 324, Navarro 300, and then Kawasaki 307. And a chance to do some damage here in his first at bat. Munenori Kawasaki was a seven time all star in Japan. He was a very good player. Played shortstop every day. Played his whole career in Fukuoka. Interesting defensive alignment. The right side is in. And the shortstop is back. So the Blue Jays, I think, are going to have to read that. Altuve keeps looking into the dugout, wanting to know where to position himself. Reason they're in, he's going to try and pull the ball. Kawasaki to get the run in and the run over. Usually you don't see a second baseman like this, two on and nobody out, playing this shallow early in the ball game. Kawasaki with a 2 2 count. Pops it up. Out in front of home plate. Matt Dominguez coming down, makes the catch. One out, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update for us. Thank you, Jamie. Of course, the Red Sox say ended up with a pretty good roster of players for down the road when you consider Cespedes and Alan Craig, a couple of corner outfitters. Made a couple of other moves. They got Will Middlebrooks, like Jamie was talking about. Mookie Betts was in the starting lineup for the Red Sox. So lots of changes in Beantown. Ryan Goins in the ninth spot takes a first pitch curveball for his strike. Ryan had an RBI single in last night's game in his first at bat. He drove in the second Blue Jays run of the game. Now the curveball, this went around the outside corner. Interesting how the defense has changed. Another left handed bat, just like Kawasaki, but now the right side of the infield is backed up. So as a hitter right now, I think Ryan should be thinking the middle of the field at worst to the ground ball. To the second baseman or the shortstop. You'll get yourself an RBI. With team offense right there. That's some interesting defense. Kawasaki's in with nobody out, and now with one out, a number nine batter, they back off. Goins is at 324 since his recall, and he drills that breaking ball foul. He's a different hitter. Now he's not thinking about hitting, he's just hitting. And that's what Yogi Berra said many, many years ago. You can't think and hit. <laughs> you can't think and hit at the same time, right? Nope. Impossible. Right now, he's just letting it go. He's not worrying about where his hands are or where his feet are. He's not looking for He's just looking for the ball and just trying to swing. McHugh's been throwing a lot more breaking balls this season and getting better results from them. There's a big breaking ball. He gets the strikeout. Just what he needed. So the Blue Jays a promising start to this inning. Now they have two outs. And it is a breaking ball. Here's the overhand curveball. Q had a 12 strikeout game this season against the Seattle Mariners using that four seam fastball and that overhand curveball. Jose Reyes now trying to pick up his teammates. Goins strikes out. Second and third, two outs. All right, fastball. Boy, they got to get these runs in. I'm telling you, it almost came back to haunt them last night in a game that went back and forth. Second and third, nobody out. They got to get one. There's another fastball. This one for a strike.
Reyes with 33 RBIs. There's a ball hit hard, but to the right field, and Robbie Grossman makes the catch. Well, the Blue Jays get a single and a double, second and third. Nobody out, and they can't cash in. Nice job by Colin McHugh. Showdown series when the Blue Jays take on the Orioles at Rogers Center. It all begins Tuesday night, August 5th. The 707 start. Three night games Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This place Orioles are in town. You can get your tickets by calling the Blue Jays at 416 341 1234. Or log online at bluejays.com to order your tickets to Baltimore Orioles at Rogers Center for three starting Tuesday, August 5th. And maybe they won't be the first place Orioles by the time they get to Rogers Center. That's a possibility. Blue Jays have a good series here against the Houston Astros and Baltimore's playing Seattle. Maybe that'll flip. Jamie Campbell will keep us all up to speed on everything that's going on around the American League East tonight, I'm sure. Yankees are in Boston. Angels are in Tampa Bay. And Seattle's in Baltimore. John Gibbons doesn't have time to think about those other teams. <laughs> He's got enough to worry about here, doesn't he? There's a ball hit toward first. Danny Valencia. One down. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2014 Honda Civic. Canada's best-selling car 16 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful statue outside of Minute Maid Park. A gorgeous ballpark. Of course, they really haven't drawn that well given the fact that the team is young. They're trying to rebuild this organization back to the championship statue they had in 2005. Jesus Guzman. Playing at first base tonight. Talk about rebuilding their team. They 44 wins. That's actual, actually, actually an improvement over last year at this time. Last year at this time, 36 wins on August the first of last season. There have been some promising issues for Bo Porter here, and we've talked about some of the youngsters. We saw. John Singleton last night hit a long home run. George Springer is currently on the DL. He's got over 20 home runs. There are some encouraging players here now. Yeah, Dexter Fowler is also on the disabled list. I like him in center field. They did not win their 44th game last year until August the 26th. Game 45, they didn't win until September the 1st. 
Strike three call. Guzman didn't like it. Felt like it was low. Jay Happ with his second strikeout using that fastball very effectively early. Again, it's something about his fastball, a lot like Todd Redmond's that we saw last night. Batters just don't pick it up. This one is right at the knees. Guzman does not have an argument there. That's right there. Yeah, it certainly was high enough. It was well above the knees. Two outs for Happ. Carlos Corcoran, the switch hitting catcher. Corcoran has been hot lately over his last nine games. He's hit 333. 11 for 33. Corcoran now. 30 years old. He's from Puerto Rico. Big wild swing. He has played with Milwaukee in the big leagues. Came up with the Brewers and got a cup of coffee in 2009 and literally a cup of coffee. Came up, played one game, had one at bat, got one hit. That's a small cup of coffee. <laughs> That's not time for a cup of coffee. <laughs> Another foul back. Came to the Astros in 2011. Got into 52 games that year. 12. Once again, he was a backup last year. He had his most at bats in the majors. He had 191 at bats. Had seven home runs and 30 RBIs. That's good production for a backup catcher. 0 2. Good looking pitch. Tap didn't get to call with that fastball. Everything away to Corcoran. Of course, you try to keep away from the Crawford seats down the left field yep. line. That's very inviting for right handed hitters. Breaking ball, bounce to short. Reyes waits, uses that good arm, and throws out the Astros catcher. Six up, six down for Jay Happ. We'll move to the top of the third. Melky Cabrera has already singled and scored. Bautista had a line drive single off the scoreboard. And Deanna Navarro with a sack fly RBI. Sportsnet.ca MLB insiders cover every angle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Breaking news, photos, videos, opinions, and tweets. A one-stop shop for everything Blue Jays. The Blue Jays rundown only on Sportsnet.ca. And tonight the headline on the rundown is who improved the most at the trade deadline, Mr. Tabman. Well, uh, you know, everybody's talking about Lester going to Oakland. Sure, he makes them a better a better team. And David Price going to the Detroit Tigers makes them a better team. But the headline says who improved the most. I think the team that improved the most might be the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, they opened up a spot for Oscar Tavares to uh, get some playing time by trading away Craig. And they got John Lackey, a proven postseason pitcher. They also got Justin Masterson if he's healthy. They recognize that Waka. 
and Jaime Garcia are both going to be gone for the team. They went out, got two very good pitchers for that pitching staff. How about A.J. Pierzynski? Wasn't a trade, but he certainly brought a veteran presence behind the plate until Yadier Molina is healthy, and he's going to be out a while. So I think that's a pretty good move. I tell you what, I like what the Red Sox did. I think the Red Sox did exactly what they had to do. They got two key position players in Cespedes and Crick. Joe Kelly is a 26 year old monster pitcher. Everybody says well he's hurt right now. He's got a hamstring problem. Yeah. He did it trying to bunt and running up the baseline. He injured his hamstring. It's still not 100 percent. But he can pitch. We've seen him pitch in the postseason. Yeah. yeah. They, they certainly made the most moves and the most noise the Boston Red Sox and they had to do something. I think uh, Ben Charrington, the general manager of the Red Sox, gets uh, an A for effort for everything. All the irons in the fire that he had, he was able to organize that and keep it going, and they improved themselves. I agree with that. Melky Cabrera takes a leadoff walk here in the third. Bautista will step in. Jose hit a line drive off the scoreboard in left field his first time up. Now, Bo Porter coming out to the home plate umpire. Second time that we have seen this. Yeah, this is really curious, and there's been something going on, and obviously we're not privy to what Porter has on his mind. But he is going to talk to the crew chief. Could this be a review of the count? I'm wondering if it has something to do with something he's maybe. still not pleased with the grounds with the mound well you know what it's your ballpark and you guys got it too wet but it didn't seem as though McHugh was concerned about it. I mean he was pointing out to the big grounds crew that something just wasn't right now they're having a look at it and they're going to bring the turfers out the drying agent Bring out the rakes, and you know what? It's really curious that Bo Porter would wait until they face a batter. I mean, if McHugh was having problems with it, you'd address it before you start the inning. He he would have said something. Yeah. You know. It's really interesting that they would wait until the inning starts, and McHugh walks the first batter of the inning. And you know, oftentimes you see visiting teams complaining about a mound. Not very often you see. Home teams complaining about yeah, uh, his first walk tonight. So obviously he is getting a good grip on that clay that they're trying to dig out there now. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we had mentioned the Blue Jays have improved. They won 15 games in July compared to 12 in June, and John Gibbons has seen a return of the offense. As a team, the Blue Jays hit 248 in June. And then they picked it up. Since the All-Star break, they have really picked it up. They've hit over 300 since the break. That's first in the American League. Scoring almost six runs a game, also first. Hits per game, 10.6. They've homered 18 times since the break, and their record reflects the impact of their offense. You know what they're doing? They're working well as a team. With three of their regulars not in the lineup right now, the guys have come up here. And give me a set. He said, hey, here's your opportunity to do something at the major league level. We're going to give you a chance to show what you can do. Anthony Ghost has done a good job. He has come up from the farm system and has helped out with his speed. And Nolan Reimold has come over and has put up some very professional at bats and production. Ryan Goins has done his thing also uh, offensively. So they're working together and working well as a team. That guy right there, Navarro. Is knocking some big runs. Well, while the grounds crew addresses the issue on the mound, let's check in with Jamie Campbell, see what's going on around the baseball world. Wei in Chin. He's the starter for Baltimore, and he's had a good month. He has pitched very well for the Orioles and part of that really kind of under the radar pitching staff for Baltimore. He is going to start game two 
of the pregame series in Toronto. That'll be Wednesday night, but Wei in Chen, 4 0 for the month of July. 292 earned run average. We check in with the pitchers that had great months in July. Sonny Gray, who is what, their third best yeah. starter? He went 5 0 in the month of July with a 103 ERA. And Scott Casimir, he's 3 0. He pitched well. Casimir's there four, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They go uh, Lester, Smarch, uh, Sonny Gray, and uh, and Scott Casimir. Not too shabby. Yeah. The Oakland A's, of course, they got John Lester and Johnny Gomes, and they gave up a good player in Cespedes. And they picked up Sam Fold, who they had for seven games early in the season. They moved him to Minnesota, but got him back. Oakland has a concern now because Craig Gentry, their backup outfielder, has a broken wrist. Coco Crisp has got something going on with his neck, so they needed fold, and they'll probably use him and Johnny Gomes to platoon in left field. And it cost them Tommy Malone. Yeah. You know, we saw Malone win six straight games, the last one against us when we were out there over the July 4th weekend. Tommy Malone was on a six game win streak when he was sent back to the minor leagues and he asked for a trade and they obliged. So McHugh now seems to be satisfied with the state of the mound. Jose Bautista had to wait a long time. He had a line drive single off the scoreboard in left his first time up. Off speed pitch backed up and caught the inside corner. Inside. Bautista almost got hit by a pitch in his first hit by the cue missed badly with an inside fastball. I'll tell you what, uh, if that's their game plan right there to try and crowd him with fastballs, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, it's a good idea if you're a Blue Jay fan. Breaking ball. Bautista zeroed in pretty effectively against McHugh right now. Jose hammers those pitches on the inner half like that. He's too quick for you to try and sneak a fastball by him. Bautista took a healthy cut. That ball looked like it had a little run on it inside. Last 11 games for Jose have been very fruitful. 378 average, three doubles, four homers, and nine RBIs. Fights it off. Back to the mound, and there's a high throw out to him off the bag. But he tags Cabrera. Melky trying to slide around the tag of Altuve. McHugh cost himself a double play. He made a bad throw to second. Missed his spot. They were pulled around in that shift with Bautista at the plate. So no crow hop from McHugh. He just catches the ball and tries to throw it all in one motion. And he misses his spot. Look at that. A little bit too quick. A one hopper back to the mound like that. And you've got time to set your feet and make a good throw to second base to start that double play. Now, too, he made an all star caliber play when he caught the bad throw and dove back into the baseline. So now Cabrera is out for an assistant on the fielder's choice. Bautista's at first, Deanna Navarro. Navarro's hitting with a lot of confidence right now. You can see the way he's taking pitches that he's not concerned about letting a good one go. Yeah, he's not afraid to hit with a strike. And the power he is really turning on a lot of pitches on the inner half lately. Again, another good take from Navarro. The Blue Jays as a team this month, this past month in July, had an on base percentage of 340. Second only to Tampa Bay. So they were very selective. That's partly 
the idea right there. That ball ripped down the right field line. And I know what you don't want to do to Deanna Navarro is throw a ball middle away and down. You can see the heat zone versus right handed pitching. He likes the ball out away from him and down. Those types of pitches go right to his barrel. Time and time again, he has sent balls to left center field for extra bases. He's all over that pitch, but it's well foul into the second deck. You know, that heat graph was interesting because it was the outer three quarters of the plate, basically, where he wants to extend his arms. We have seen a lot of hitters develop that kind of approach. And I have a theory about that. One, two. There's a good fastball to strike out. Second strikeout of the night for Colin McHugh. I think the hitters have become more aware that pitchers aren't pitching inside. Umpires aren't calling that inside strike. They can dive out over the plate and cover the outer three quarters, and that's where they've become very strong. Or in the past, you could really jam them up and that part was the inside part was the hitters and the outside part was the pitchers. There was a distinct difference. The hitters had the inner half, pitchers had the outer half, and that's just the way baseball was. Plus, another pitch that created that kind of approach was the slider. Down and away, you had to extend to get to it. 25, 30 years ago, the slider wasn't quite as prominent. Nolan Rimo takes a pitch inside. Sal Buteri is coaching at first, and we've been informed that the first base coach, Tim Leeper, is just under the weather. And Buteri, who has been manning the video replay in the clubhouse for the Blue Jays, has taken over as the first base coach. Up the middle, Altuve positioned perfectly. Goes to first, Reinhold is retired. Blue Jays get a leadoff walk, and nothing more. They leave a runner. We'll go to the bottom of the third. One nothing Jays. of Food Banks Canada it takes place the weekend of August 8th through the 10th when the Blue Jays take on the Detroit Tigers. During the Tigers series, bring your non-perishable food items and cash donations to gates 3, 5, 10, and 13. There'll be Lady Jays on hand to handle your donations. There are also mystery bags available for a monetary donation. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234 for tickets or log online at bluejays.com. And help out the 30th annual Lady Jays Food Drive. And there's a chance you're going to see a Cy Young pitcher pitching in that series. David Price is a Tiger now. They've had the last three Cy Young Award winners in the American League. How about that? Verlander, Scherzer, Price. Pretty good rotation. Jake Marisnik in his first at bat with the Astros. Mariznick drafted by the Blue Jays traded in that Miami Marlins trade 
He is back in the big leagues now with the Astros. It's this one on the ground. Reyes takes his time. One down. Mariznik, a highly regarded defensive player, he can play center and he can run, but so far he hasn't been able to get things together with the bat. In limited at bats, he hasn't really had a great opportunity. Well, Porter's got some young talent and he's trying to be patient with him. Today, they had some extra work out on the field. Yeah, that's something that you see a lot uh, when you're down in the minor leagues. Uh, a lot of young players, and you're teaching them the game to get them out on that field. And all right, today, outfielders, we're going to work on digging the ball out of the corner and throwing the ball to second base. I mean, there's so many different things in baseball that you can work on. And the Astros are doing it right. They know they've got a rebuilding job going on here. They know they've got a lot of young players. And you got to get out here and you're learning on the job. Can I get out here and work? Bill Porter in his second season as the Astros manager. You mentioned that workout and it really reminded me of the early days with the Blue Jays. When I first got to Toronto in 1981, Bobby Maddock was the manager. And he would have Bell, Barfield, and Mosby in the outfield every single day. And they were going through those same drills. There's another strikeout for Jay Hatt. LJ Hose caught looking third strike out of the night eight straight retired by half. You know it could be something as simple as we see this pitch first for a half right on the outside corner down and away to Hose for another strikeout. He's had at least one in the first three innings here. But it could be something as simple as catching a fly ball getting your feet set for a player who's trying to tag up and, and advance a base. And those those kind of things. They're taught in the minor leagues, but they're refined here at the major league level. Bobby Maddock was a terrific talent evaluator. He had a lot to do with the success of the Blue Jays early on. He was a scout and signed Frank Robinson and Veda Pinson. And those are just two of the many great players he signed. He just kind of signed them out of Oakland, California. And of course, Frank Robinson is a Hall of Famer. There's a high pop on the right side. Ryan Goins, the second baseman, takes charge. He's on the outfield grass. Jay Happ retired nine straight. We're through three. Blue Jays have an early lead. Game for the debut of our latest Blue Jays documentary, Double Play. It's a closer look at the winning combination of Paul Beeston and Pat Kimmick. Double Play following the Jays on Sunday on four Sportsnet channels. And you can talk to either one of those two gentlemen, and they won't stop at two. They'll talk about a lot of people, including Bobby Maddock, Mel Queen, Bob Engel, 
Gordy Lakey who was in our yep. booth before the game tonight. Chris Borges so many great scouts. And Tim Wilkin and they were scouts and they were evaluators and there were guys on the field that were really coaching. They all put it together and the system was in place before long before the World Series championships. The baseball organization was an envy of everybody in the world of baseball. The baseball people that they had here they were getting players year in and year out and not just getting good players. They were developing very good players. You talk about. Bobby Maddock and getting those guys on the other end of the fungo. Kelly Gruber tells stories all the time about the, the hours that he spent at the complex in Dunedin on the other end of that fungo from Bobby Maddock. Bobby Maddock was my manager when I first came to the Blue Jays in 1981. And he was a stickler for fundamentals. Yeah, he was kind of a grumpy old guy but he was a baseball legend and he was a guy that demanded you do things right. And then you had Jimmy Williams who I still say is the best coach I ever had. He knew every position on the field. And he knew how to teach. He taught those three outfielders we mentioned. He taught the infielders how to play. He was so well regarded in baseball that scouts would send their players to where Jimmy Williams was. So they would hope so he could coach their players. Agents. Great organization. So Agents. make sure you check out that documentary. Agents would send their players where Jimmy Williams was. was. Well, Colin McHugh has three strikeouts so far tonight. And we thought we'd look at the strikeouts per nine innings. The AL leader, you Darvish of the Rangers. And then Colin McHugh is right behind him. 10.35 strikeouts per nine innings. He's ahead of Scherzer, Odorisi, and Chris Sale. He's in rarefied air in strikeouts per nine innings. Came into this game 102 strikeouts in 88 and two thirds innings. Doesn't really light up the radar gun. But he's got a good combination of fastball curveball. Danny Valencia hits the two hopper to third. Two quick outs here in the top half of the fourth. To finish up on one th final thought about the Blue Jays in those early years, and it's all in reference to the documentary double play that is on the air Sunday after a ball game. The talent that they brought in, Bobby Cox brought in Cito Gaston, John Sullivan, Galen Cisco, the coaching staff was incredible. But they had a great foundation of scouts and development people that would continue to push talent to the major leagues, and they had an abundance of talent. Year in and year out. Great athletes, high ceiling players that found their way through the farm system, were, were taught the game of baseball, and then got to the big leagues and made a difference. Munanori Kawasaki with an 0 2 count. There's Gord Lakey. And in a striped shirt. Light colored shirt. He lives in the Houston area. Now he's working with the Philadelphia Phillies. Told us he was in Cleveland watching Corey Kluber deal the other night. Yeah, he was also in Texas the night before that. In the life of a scout said he, in the seventh inning of that 12 to 11 game, there was 84 pitches thrown in that one inning. Next night he went to Cleveland. Corey Kluber threw 85 for a complete game. How about that for a back-to-back -back game? Yeah, that's a Henderson Alvarez kind of <laughs> shutout. 83, 84, 85 pitches, nine innings. Kawasaki takes it low. Full count. Two outs were in the top of the fourth. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Kawasaki got jammed and hits the little looper to short. Quick inning for Colin McHugh. Jay Happ getting set for the bottom of the fourth. Nine up, nine down. He's got three strikeouts through three.
Presented by Honda Tuesday, August 5th. The Blue Jays take on the Orioles. It's a 707 start. The first 15,000 fans will receive a hashtag Joey Bat social media t shirt giveaway chosen by you, the fans. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416 341 1234. Or log online at bluejays.com and get your tickets for Tuesday, August 5th. Connect with the Jays Night presented by Honda. Lots of Blue Jay fans in attendance. Jay Happ is dealing. Nine up, nine down. He has three strikeouts so far, and he also has a one to nothing lead. Jose Altuve flied out to center field his first time up. The breaking ball. Happ hasn't used many breaking balls, and that's when it's most effective. You get that fastball in the hitter's mind, and then that hook fools him. Second time through now. Now, two they starting the second time through tonight, so he's seen a couple of breaking balls now from Jay Happ. And how about a high fastball? There's the target. High fastball. Kawasaki unloads in a hurry. Altsuve is 0 for 2. Budenori Kawasaki. Made a nice play there at third base and does a good job. The honor Varo wants that fastball up. It didn't get it up high enough, but he comes up, it gets in on Altuve and he jams him to third base. Soft ground ball. One out. Tommy Grossman goes after the first pitch. Danny Valencia gets over to the wall, but it's four rows back out of play. Valencia making his first start at first base. And he's a third baseman. He said, just give me a glove, I'll play anywhere. And he gets another chance here with the Blue Jays. Of course, he started his career with Minnesota, played some in Boston, Baltimore, Kansas City, and now Toronto. Robbie Grossman hitting 293 since his return to the Astros, span of 18 games coming into this game. There's a curveball strike. Tell you what, uh, the first two games in this series, he's the toughest 202 hitter that we have faced this year. He's put up some good at bats. He's late on that fastball. He was on base four times in yesterday's ball game. A couple of hits and a couple of walks. He had a long at bat his first time up tonight. Robbie Grossman, a 346 hitter for his career against the Blue Jays. He likes the matchup. Boy, that's a good pitch. Hap didn't call get the it. call. Wow. The plate doesn't have any corners tonight. I, I've noticed that. Both pitchers. Have hit what looked like the corners of the plate, but they have not gotten a call. Chris Conroy, the umpire behind the plate tonight. That misses with that pitch. You know, you talk about a pitch here, pitch there. Pitcher didn't get the call. He didn't get that pitch he wanted. But pitchers pitch to a certain point in an at bat and try to make one pitch. And if you don't get that call, that throws them out of whack. And Jay had that down and away fastball as his out pitch. He was setting that hole at bat up to throw that one pitch. And what it looked like when he didn't get the call, he said, I got to be more perfect. I got to throw a better pitch. And he yanked it, but he comes back with another good one down and in. Another one of those disappearing fastballs. Four strikeouts now for Hack. Lowered the arm angle, and that has helped him to keep the ball down. More consistently, his breaking ball seems to be a, a lot better. Also, let's don't forget about the injury to his leg last year when he got hit in the head. He was saying earlier this season uh, he just couldn't land on that front foot. Curveball. Reyes at short, long throw, not in time. Offline as the first base runner. For the Astros, an infield single with two outs, Chris Carter. Comes through. Curveball, he just hit it in a good spot. 
past Kawasaki at third base. You can see Kawasaki getting ready. Curveball past him. Reyes flags it down, but he just can't get enough on it or accurately across the diamond. First hit. Just under the glove of Kawasaki, he would have had a chance to make a play on Carter. No chance for Reyes. Matt Look, Dominguez. There's one guy who could have made that play and he's not here. He's playing tonight in Dunedin. <laughs> Brent Laurie. He's playing second base tonight in Dunedin. And he's going to play third tomorrow. He'll go back and forth until he rejoins the Blue Jays. There is no time frame for his return. Nor of the return of Edwin Encarnacion or Adam Lynn. Brent Laurie is now finished in Dunedin. He finished up one for three with a walk and two strikeouts. So the process is beginning. A nice scoop by Danny Valencia. All sorts of adjustments for a guy playing first base for the first time. Valencia. Holding a runner on has to go back to the back and then has to scoop a low throw longer glove right there helped him out three and oh now to Dominguez who has home run power so you got to be careful here you might. Think that the Astros are going to let him. Swing away here. He takes ball four. So Jay Happ after retiring the first 11. Gives up an infield single and now issues his first walk. Reyes didn't have a chance on that ball hit in the hole. It was a curveball pulled deep in the hole at short. Jesus Guzman was a strikeout victim his first time up. Jay Happ has to get back into the strike zone. Well, it's the first time that he's been out of the stretch tonight. So he's going to have to find the, his release point when he goes in the stretch. It was fine coming out of the windup until that infield single. There's a little looper, and that's going to drop in center field. Carter's around third. He's going to score. And the Astros have tied it up and it all started with nobody on and she wants. Jesus Guzman with his eighth RBI of the season. A little flare into center. They haven't hit the ball very hard this inning but they've got a run to show for it. An infield single by Carter a walk and now this flare. In the center field. Leads the Astros first run tying this ball game up. That's disappointing after you get those quick outs and then a rally starts from nowhere on an infield single. Now you have to deal with a hot hitter in the catcher Carlos Corcoran. He grounded a short his first time up. He's 11 for his last 34. First pitch swinging fouls it out of play. The Astros are a very aggressive ball club. They swing from their heels. They're third in the American League in home runs, and they have homered in six straight games. Bo Porter's Astros have hit 11 home runs in those six games. They hit the most home runs in the month of July. 32 in the American League. Cleveland had 31, Baltimore 29, the Yankees 28, and the Blue Jays 26. That's the top five. Home run clubs in the American League for the month of July. Houston, they didn't score as many runs as those other teams because they didn't get on base as often. Brooklyn checked on that high fastball. John Singleton had a home run last night to extend that streak to six straight. He had a solo home run in the second inning, his ninth of the season.
Houston, 44 and 65. They're 21 games under 500. Off speed pitch and Cooper gets a piece of it. Having a good at bats, making G half work. This is a team also, the Astros, that came into this game with the most strikeouts in the American League. 957. So you you can pitch to them. If you make your pitch, you can get out of tough, tough spots like this one. Two on and two out. One ball, two strikes. Runners at first and second, a run in this inning. The Astros have tied it up. Jesus Guzman with an RBI single. Drove home Chris Carter. Matt Dominguez walked. He's now at second. Bopern got a piece of it. Jay Hamp hasn't really made a real good pitch in this at bat to see the Strikes all bunched up in the middle of the plate, and Corcoran hasn't been able to put him in play. But Jay Happ hasn't made one of those real quality pitches with his fastball. Too many pitches in the middle of the zone. Yeah, there. there's the cluster in the middle of the strike zone. Two, or excuse me, one and two count. Maybe you can go up. And a high fly ball into center. Rasmus over to his right. The Astros strand the pair, but they score a run on two hits and a walk, and we move to the fifth. It's a 1 1 game. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn. After every game on Blue Jays Talk with Mike Wilner. Extensive debate on the whole story. Blue Jays Talk with Mike Wilner after the game on Sportsnet 590. The fan. And there's Alan Ashby, former partner of Mike Wilner's while he was in Toronto. Now he is back here in Houston, his hometown, working the television show with Bill Brown. Great broadcast. Great broadcaster here. John Singleton has come on to play. First base, Jesus Guzman started at first base. He got a little bloop base hit to tie the game up. Now he's out of the game. And if we get any information about the possibility of an injury, we'll bring that to you. And Guzman is out, Singleton is in. Certainly didn't see anything that might suggest he injured himself. Didn't hit the ball that hard, did he? Maybe he got some splinters in his hands. The little bloop. So Singleton in defensively as we move to the fifth. Ryan Goins. Number nine hitter struck out his first time up. Goins struck out on a slow curveball. One of three strikeouts McHugh has registered tonight. And that one came at a opportune time for McHugh. Blue Jays had second and third nobody out. 
and couldn't score. And that was a disappointing inning. Rasmus singled. Valencia doubled first two batters in the inning. They were at second and third, and they stayed at second and third. It's the last time Blue Jays had a hit. McHugh seems to be settling down. Colin McHugh has retired six straight. Two balls and two strikes to Ryan Goins. Carlos Corporan behind the plate, catching in place of Jason Castro, the regular catcher that caught last night. This should be a curveball. What gave it away for you? The fact that he's tapping the dirt with his glove. You know, teams will pick up on that, especially the on deck hitter, and have a little something to to say to that batter. It is so easy for the on deck hitter to pick up on that. Reyes standing on deck. If he sees that glove tap on the dirt, he can call out, Hey, Ryan, come on, get a hit now. Yep. Yep. First name for curveball, your last name for a fastball. There's a curveball. I used to do that all the time for Willie Upshaw. Willie was a left handed batter. He hit in front of me a lot, and I would get up close to home plate, kneel down in the on deck circle, and watch the catcher. And he'd Move inside and say, "Come on, Willie." Yep, yep. Uh, and how many times from from a right hander? That's going to be a, a heater. Going to be a fastball. That's off the end of the bat. In the dirt, and Singleton can't handle it. So Goins is aboard to start the inning. John Singleton, fresh into the game, couldn't help his shortstop out, Gregorio Petit, with a very low throw. The scoop in the dirt. Cost them the air. Comes up firing. He throws it right in the dirt. And Singleton just couldn't keep that glove down long enough. Right off the end of the glove. Petit starting just the fourth time in Houston. Picks up his first air of the season. So Goins is aboard. Reyes takes a pitch inside. Blue Jays have left three base runners on so far. It's a 1 1 game. We have seen John Gibbons hit and run in this instance right here. A runner at first base and a batter ahead in the count. Not going here way outside. That one missed by a mile. Now, as Corcoran encouraging Colin McHugh. Focus on the glove now. Let's throw a strike. Now it's three and zero. Oh. He had retired six straight. The air put him back in the stretch, and he can't find the strike zone. Two zero -oh slider. Jose Reyes. He doesn't finish it off, and now he's behind. Gray is taking all the way. So I'll give you the chance right now to play hit and run. Three and one. Reyes has seen four pitches in this at bat. He's got a pretty good read on McHugh. This is his third AB tonight, and he's going to get a fastball. No, nope, he's going to get a slider. Good. Hook one into that hole on the right side. Not running. Popped up over near the seats and back out of play. Mention Jose Reyes had a good month of July. He was a 324 hitter for the month. He had 36 hits. Full count, nobody out. There goes the runner. Swung on and missed, and a strong throw has struck him out, throw him out. Reyes strikes out. Corcoran threw a strike to second, and Goins is caught stealing. You know, you start that runner hoping that that batter 
uses it like a hit and run. And the worst thing you have is a runner in scoring position for Melky Cabrera and Jose Bautista. But when Reyes swings through that 3 2 slider, Ryan Goins is a dead duck at second base. Strike him out, throw him out. So the air by the shortstop is erased as Reyes strikes out. Four strikeouts for McHugh. Melky Cabrera has been on base twice. This is going to be foul into the seats. That was the right decision right there. Start that runner. Got to give Cabrera and Bautista a chance to drive him in from second base. Reyes just came up empty on that high slider. It was the right move. There's no question. Just. Reyes struck out for the 49th time and Corcoran threw him out. There's a ball drilled to center. Mariznik ranging back makes an easy play. So the air to the leadoff man doesn't factor in. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It's a 1 1 game in Houston. Jake Mariznik will lead things off. Cover every angle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Follow Shy Davidi, taking you beyond the bases with in depth analysis and expert opinion. It's the inside scoop, Shy Davidi, MLB Insider only on Sportsnet.ca. Shy Davidi has been busy over the course of the last couple of days. Trade deadline, lots of deals going on. And now, just because players haven't been traded, doesn't mean there aren't going to be more trades. They just have to go through waivers now, and they become a little bit more complicated. But they can still be done. David Cohn's one of the great sure. August trades Blue Jays ever pulled off. I think you might see some of those Philadelphia Philly players start to get traded now in the month of August. Well, Cliff Lee went on a disabled list, so he's out of the mix. Left flexor pronator strain. It's related to that Tommy John. Mm -hmm. So he's back on the DL. How about AJ Burnett? This is a pop up. Valencia coming down from first makes the catch. AJ Burnett. How about Felix Dubron getting traded to the Cubs and going on a DL? <laughs> Had a strained calf. Will Middlebrooks has been called up. How about Aaron Hill? Possibility of him being yes. traded in August. But, you know, now too, where you find out that teams that have just made all these trades, they don't have the flexibility to claim players on waivers. You know they have a full house now, so you might be able to pass a few guys through and make a trade. Well, the um, the waiver period when you throw them through waivers and you claim them, you get the player and his salary. Yeah, don't forget about that. That's where a lot of teams say no thanks. Yeah, you throw Ryan Howard on there and you think, oh, oh you can get Ryan Howard, and then you check the sale price. <laughs> it's a little daunting. 
LJ Hose, the left fielder tonight. He struck out his first time up. He was caught looking at strike three. Some of the other players that might get moved, you mentioned the Phillies. How about Marlon Bird? Mm -hmm. He's a right handed bat. There was talk during the period before the trade deadline that he wanted his option picked up before he would agree to a deal. Alex Rios, Ben Zobris, a couple of names that have been talked about. Valencia wants to get over to the railing, but it's out of his reach. Bartolo Colon, how about him with the Mets? Still throwing well. Don't know how he's doing it, but he's getting the job done for New York. That that's a National League pickup for me. Martolo Colon. How about Jonathan Papelbon? He's owed 13 million next year in a reachable 13 million dollar salary for 16. Another strikeout there. Two down. Five strikeouts for Hap. The 2014 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 16 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Comfortable evening in Houston as the Blue Jays are indoors here at Minute Maid Park for a second consecutive game. This is the second of a four-game series. Gregorio Petit, the shortstop, popped out to the second baseman. Jay Happ had a little hiccup in the fourth with two outs. Came up with a single to Chris Carter. First hit for the Astros. First base runner. And then he walked Matt Dominguez and gave up a bloop RBI single to Jesus Guzman. Then Guzman left the game. We have still not been updated as to why he left. John Singleton is at first base now. Batting in the fifth spot. Hit on the ground, Reyes at short. Inning is over. Three up, three down. The Astros go quietly in the fifth. We go to the sixth. It's a 1 1 game. Is presented by Bacardi. Friday, August 8th, the Blue Jays will take on the Detroit Tigers. Game time is 7.07 p.m. Come on down to Rogers Center early and check out the free game festivities happening outside of gate number 10. Frank Catalanato and John Mayberry, a couple of former Blue Jays, will be signing autographs from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Call the Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Or log online at BlueJays.com for the Tigers series. It all starts Friday, August 8th. It's all presented behind McCarty. Three, four, and five in a Blue Jays order here in the sixth. Jose Bautista looks at that breaking ball. 
In that Tigers series, it'll be Anibal Sanchez, Max Scherzer, and David Price, the three pitchers the Blue Jays will face. So we only get two Cy Young Award winners. Only two. Bautista with a big rip fouls it into the upper deck. Of course, the Tigers gave up their center fielder, Austin Jackson. He went to Seattle in that three team trade with Tampa Bay. Fastball missed. Two balls in his strike, the leadoff man here in the sixth. It's a 1 1 game. Blue Jays let Colin McHugh off the hook in the second. Bautista rips it to the third baseman. Dominguez made a nice play. I'm not sure if he knew he had it, but he had it in his glove and is able to throw Bautista out. Boy, that almost worked out for the Blue Jays because Jonathan Singleton, the first baseman, was way off the line. And Dominguez balls hit to him very quickly. He comes up firing. I don't think his first baseman is ready to catch the ball. Still working his way over there. You can see him go, whoa, <laughs> how did I catch that? Singleton just came into the game last inning as a defensive replacement. Gianna Navarro gets another base hit up the middle. Navarro, one for two. He had the sacrifice fly in the first. Stay hot, Deanna. He's had a great road trip. That's his 11th hit on this road trip. Simple approach at the plate, take it right back through the middle. Now, Blue Jays got to come up with some big hits. Nolan Rimmel had a two homer night last night. His second career multi home run game. That's Brent Strong, the pitching coach, out to talk to. Alan McHugh. Darren Downs, one of two left handers in the Astros bullpen, is loosening up. You got Rasmus, Kawasaki, and Goins, three of the next four batters after Rymel. Swing from the left side, so they're wasting some time to get Downs ready. Yeah. That was an extended. Meeting on the mound, and it shouldn't take Darren Downs long now. He should be ready for the next batter, Colby Erasmus. But first, McHugh will deal with Nolan Rimmel. Rimmel. Two homers last night in his last five games going back to the games prior to the All Star break. He has a 429 average coming into this game. Oh, he got a nice breaking ball inside. It's called strike. Big slow hook. He's right through that fastball. It's now 0 and 2. Rimmel for the season at the Jays. This is just his 20th at bat. And he strikes out. Little cutter off the end of the bat. Two down. Hughes breaking ball has been better. 2014, they're hitting 175 against it. That time, Nolan Ryan will comes up empty. Three pitches and a strikeout. Mentioned that McHugh is averaging over 10 strikeouts per nine innings of work. He's got five tonight. Boy, the Astros really play the shifts, don't they? Kobe Rasmus batting, and there's Three infielders on the right side of the diamond. We saw it against Bautista, Reinhold, now Rasmus. There's one way to beat that shift. Hit it in the seats. Well, we did that in Boston. It went deep into the seats in the second inning on Tuesday night. Part of a two hit night. Way outside. 
with that shift on they are not holding Navarro on at first base playing right behind them. Not really a threat to steal. Rasmus fouls it off. One ball, two strikes, two outs. We're in the six. It's a one-one game. Blue Jays scored a run in the top of the first. Yana Navarro with a sacrifice fly. Houston, an RBI single by Jesus Guzman in the fourth. Boy, when he misses, he misses by a long ways. That fastball really ran down and away. Doesn't even show up on pitch tracker. <laughs> he was up there. That one just got away from him. Full count. Now Navarro can run. Two outs. Danny Valencia right handed bat on deck if Rasmus could keep the inning alive. Valencia has doubled already tonight. There goes Navarro. Popped up center field. Shortstop Petit is back on the grass and Rasmus retired. The inning is over. The Blue Jays leave a runner. They've stranded four through six innings. It's a 1 1 game. Hits. He has 151 hits to this point of the season. And when you look at the franchise history, hits in a season, great Biggio, the great second baseman, center fielder, catcher for the Astros at 210. That's the record. He got those hits in 98. Miguel Tejada missed the 200 mark by one in 2009. Former Blue Jay, Derek Bell, had 198 hits in 98. And Jose Altuve. 151 hits to date. He's projected to get 222 hits, which, which would be a franchise record. And the Astros have never had a batting champ. That's hard to believe, isn't it? The great players that they have had here. Cesar Cedeno comes to mind. Jose Cruz comes to mind. How about Joe Morgan, Jimmy Wynn? A lot of great hitters that have played here, and they've never had a batting champ. Lance Berkman. Now Tibe goes after the first pitch and hits it a mile high in left, but not deep. One out. Let's check it with Jamie Campbell. Boy, they are getting some pretty good pitching right now. Way in Chin has done a nice job. The Orioles. Are going to get Ubaldo Jimenez back soon. He's on a rehab assignment. 
Andrew Miller pitched in that game. He pitched two thirds of an inning, had a walk and no strikeouts. And Britain picked up the save as Jamie mentioned, his 22nd of the season. How about the left-handers? They can throw at you now out of that bullpen. Britain, Miller, Mattis, they've got a nice complimentary trio of lefties. Britain's got that hard sinker. Miller's got the exaggerated arm angle and a great breaking ball. And Mattis is a former starter that can throw anything at you. Then we've got Tommy Hunter from the right side. He throws hard. Darren O'Day, the down under guy. Their bullpen's pretty good. Jim Johnson is out there floating now, and he can be acquired. It would cost you the prorated minimum salary. That would not be a bad guy, I think, for the Blue Jays to take a look at. He had a terrible season with Oakland. But he had back to back 50 save seasons yeah. pitching for the Orioles. Sinker baller. That plays. Well, it would play well for the Blue Jays given the fact that Bob Stanley is their bullpen coach. He was one of the best sinker ball pitchers we've seen. It might be a good marriage. 3 1. The one out walk, second walk issued by Jay Happ. The 2014 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 16 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Hoops game going on. It's a comfortable summer night here in Houston. Of course, the Rockets are a big popular team here in the Houston area. We got next. We'll put a team together. You, me, Scotty. Yeah, right. Some of the guys from the truck. We got next. I can't even spell basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you can play, I know that. Chris Carter got the first hit off of Jay Happ with two outs in the fourth inning. He was the first base runner. Happ retired the first 11 batters tonight. Big swing and a miss. He is a candidate for that. 212 strikeouts last year. A lot of whiffs. With that comes some pop. He's got 21 homers. Interesting pitching duel tonight. A one run game. It is 1 1. There have been seven hits in total. Friday with another swing and a miss. Both of these teams can hit the long ball. There were five home runs in the game last night. The Blue Jays lead. The majors in home runs and the Astros are third in the American League in home runs. Houston has hit homers in six straight games. Perhaps done a nice job of shutting down these potent bats. And they've hit the most home runs in the month of July at 32 in the American League. And really a guy that scares you. They hit home runs. Carter with his 21 and Singleton, but they can both be pitched to. If you make a pitch, you can get the strikeout. Gets a piece of that and fouls it over to Blue Jays' dugout. I think you're just speeding up his bat by throwing him a breaking ball. I think you got to pound him up with a fastball. The base hit he got was a slow curveball. He just pulled it on the ground. He's got his share of two strike home runs this year. He's got. Ten of them. Off speed pitch looks like a change up that bounced in the dirt. You know what happens? You see a lot of these pitchers get matters to two strikes and then they try to trick them. Kind of throw a breaking ball or a change up, something off speed. And every hitter in the world with two strikes is short enough. Mm -hmm. They become vulnerable to the Fastball. 169 average. There's a 10 home runs. And a big swing and a miss, and Carter strikes out his second strikeout of the night. That's six for half now. One every inning. Goes with the breaking ball right here. Good job by Navarro. First to catch it and then duck out of the way from that recoil off the bat of Chris Carter. 
That's being aware right there. You see Navarro tapping his head, a reminder for Jay Happ. Let's be smart on this first pitch now. He wants it away. And he wanted it there, and he acknowledges that pitch. Yeah. Don't give in to Dominguez on the first pitch. He's looking to ambush a fastball. He got big John Singleton on deck, and he's got a lot of power, but he's also a left handed hitter. They're staying away from Dominguez right here, and Navarro's going to go out and make sure they're on the same page. John Singleton entered the game as a defensive replacement after. Guzman singled in the fourth. He took over at first top of the fifth, and Guzman has left the game with back spasms. So Singleton, who did not start in this game, has yet to bat. Why couldn't he leave before that yeah. RBI single? That's probably why he hit it as soft as he did. He had a back spasm. Singleton homered in the game last night, but he also struck out three times. Keeps that ball away from Dominguez, and it's going to reach the seats foul. We've mentioned it a couple of times already in these first two games for a right handed batter. You want to pull the ball, especially down the line. It's only 315 in those short seats in left field. That's why Jay Happ and Deanna Navarro are trying to keep that fastball away from Dominguez. Look at 315 down the line. Right in front of the bullpen of the Blue Jays, it's only 362. Navarro waving to his outfielders. They want him to move opposite. There goes the runner. The ball is hit high and deep to center, but Rasmus has got plenty of room. Good job by Jay Happ and Deanna Navarro to pitch around Matt Dominguez. The Astros leave a base runner. We'll go to the seventh. It's a 1 1 game. Jay Happ in a 1 1 game has allowed just two hits to his former team, the Houston Astros. His lowest hit total in a start this season also came against his former team, the Philadelphia Phillies. His first start on May 5th at Philadelphia, he allowed three hits over five innings. Picked up a win in that game. He left with the score 3 to nothing after five innings. Danny Valencia. And a big wild swing at that breaking ball. Valencia doubled in the second. Boy, the Blue Jays had a golden opportunity in the second inning. Rasmus singled, and then Valencia doubled behind it. 
There's that slow breaking game. But then McHugh got Kawasaki to pop out to the third baseman, struck out Goins, and got Reyes to line out to right. Second and third, nobody out, and the Blue Jays couldn't score. Bottom of the order just didn't come through that time. We'll have another shot right here. Danny Valencia has some power. He's a guy that has put together a 15 home run season earlier in his career. That came in 2011 with the Twins. He had 15 homers and 72 RBIs in 2011. Hit just 246. That was his first full season in the big leagues. I'd be shocked if they tried to throw him another fastball. Breaking ball bounced in the dirt. You're right. And he threw him a slider and then a slow curveball. He's looking dead red. Yep, and he's looking for it in. Also, his double was a fastball in the inner half that he pulled into the corner in left field in the second inning. There's a drive to left field. LJ Hose to his left makes the catch. One down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Great look at downtown Houston, just a couple of blocks away from Minute Maid Park. Colin McHugh walking off the mound. He goes six in the third. He turns things over to the left-hander, Darren Downs, to face Kawasaki when we come back. On Sportsnet, live on your smartphone, visit RogersAplaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Good ball game here in Houston at Minute Maid Park. Yeah. Teams are tied at 1-1. Darren Downs, the left-hander, on in relief of the starter Colin McHugh, who went six in the third. Here are the numbers for Darren Downs in 35 games, 2 and 1 with a 491 earn run average. He was the Cubs number five, fifth round draft pick in 2003, so he has been around a long time. He's not overpowering, but he's very polished. Fastball's got some sinking action on it, and the left hander's hitting just 226 against him, so John Gibbons goes to his bench. Steve Tollison into the game. He had a pinch hit at bat in the seventh inning in last night's game. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Tollison was batting with a runner at second and two outs. He hit a ball out in front of home plate and he was hit by the throw up the first baseline and called for running out of the baseline. Valencia had come around third to score on the ball that got away after it hit Tollison, but the umpire at home 
Paul Tollison out. Paul Emmel was the home plate umpire. There's a drive into the alley in right center. Mariznick cruises over and makes the catch. Jake Mariznick can cover some ground. The young outfielder playing in his first game with the Astros since being traded yesterday. He looks very fluid out there, very athletic. Remember Aaron Rowan? He used to play center field for the White Sox and the Phillies. That's who this guy reminds me of. He takes a long, smooth stride, that's for sure. Ryan Goins, you know, bat against the lefty with two outs. Goins 0 for 2. He goes after the first pitch and pops it into foul ground. Singleton over and makes the catch. John Singleton did a good job to get to the wall, braced himself, and then leaned over the seats to make the catch. Singleton looking at that wall, knows he's got room, gets there and leans in to end the inning. Giveaway will be presented by Honda. It'll be given away Sunday, August 10th, when the Blue Jays take on the Detroit Tigers. It's a 107 start. The first 20,000 fans in the Rogers Center will receive a replica Blue Jays BP cap. Call the Jays for tickets at 416 341 1234 or log online at bluejays.com and get your tickets for Blue Jays BP cap giveaway presented by Honda. Steve Tollison came in the game as a pinch hitter for Kawasaki. He takes over defensively at third base. Jay Happ back to work the bottom of the seventh. 1 1 game, only seven hits in the game. Happ has held the Astros to a run on two hits. John Singleton, his first at bat, he came in after the starter, Guzman, left with. Back spasms. Jesus Guzman, the first baseman, got an RBI single and then left the game. Singleton drives it to left. Melky Cabrera was deep. Easy play for Melky. One down. Boy, Jay Happ has pitched very well against his former team. This is his. Third career start against the Astros. Second start here at Minute Maid Park. 2 0 in his career against the Astros. His first start in this ballpark since they traded him away a couple of years ago. Six and a third innings, two hits, six strikeouts, 89 pitches for half into the seventh. Carlos Corporan 0 for 2. Jay Happ started with the Phillies. He was a third round pick of Philadelphia. He came to Houston in a July trade deadline deal along with Anthony Ghost for Roy Oswald. 
And then he came to Toronto from Houston in another July deal in 2012. Anthony came to the Blue Jays from Houston in the Brett Wallace, Brett deal. Wallace trade. Jay Happ is firing strikes. 0 and 2. He's ahead of the catcher, Carlos Corporal. Jay Happ, along with Brandon Lyon and David Parker, who came to the Blue Jays on the 20th of July, 2012, for six Blue Jay players. They emptied the farm system. A lot of young players going back and forth. They also traded Ben Francisco and Francisco Cordero. A couple of veteran players off the big league roster. I remember when it happened, Lyon walked into Fenway Park to join their ball club. They met the team on the road. One and two, one out. Now it's two and two. Tried to float that one in there. They tried to place it instead of throw it to a spot. He's pitched well. He has kept the ball down. He has kept his team in the game. Misses with that pitch off the plate outside. Now it's a full count. The Blue Jays have 45 wins from their starters. That's the third highest total in the American League. Detroit has 47. Oakland has 46 and the Blue Jays. Pretty good company. There's a little liner into right. Brooklyn is aboard. He had a nice at bat. Sound like he got jammed but he was able to flare it into right. Another long at bat for Corcoran. Flew out last time. The center field this time. You're right, right off the end of the bat. It wasn't hit very hard. They've had an infield single and two bloopers into the outfield off of Jay tonight. Jake Mariznick, the center fielder. There's pitches off the plate outside. Mariznick, 23 years old. He was drafted by the Blue Jays in 2009. Started his career with the Jays in the Gulf Coast League. This is a high pop down the right side. Bautista getting chased, but it's out of play. Mariznick played with the Blue Jays in Lansing a couple of years, 2010, 2011, and he was in Dunedin in 2012. New Hampshire, he got promoted late in 12, and then he was involved in that trade. It was probably going to be an adjustment period for him at the big league level. There always is for players coming up from the minors. It's a high fly ball to the left. Melky Cabrera over. He's got room. Makes the catch. Mariznick got jammed and he flies out on the warning truck. Jay Happ, six and two thirds and six strikeouts. He's been tough on the Astros tonight. He used a little bit of everything against Houston tonight. That is his breaking ball. That's his first strikeout against Chris Carter. Then he pinks down to Guzman. And his fastball has been pretty much down in the strike zone. He's thrown it in a good spot. He's mixed in some curveballs, some change up. He'll go upstairs if you need be. Three hits given up. And not one of them have been hit hard against Jay Happ tonight. Happ has a strikeout in each of the first six innings. He's yet to strike out a matter here in the center. The percentages are in Hap's favor in that regard, given the fact you're going to face at least three Astros in an inning. Yeah, they strike out a lot. Over 1,500 strikeouts last year. They're on that same pace again 
now over 960 this season. The Astros struck out 226 times in the month of July. That was the most in the American League, one more than the Angels. Baltimore also strikes out a lot. They had 220 strikeouts. It is so difficult to put together a sustained attack when you've got so many strikeouts in your lineup. Yeah, nothing happens. You don't put the ball in play. Some bad things can happen to the defense. They could throw it away. They can air it, could find a hole. Strike out, nothing happens. Real hollow at bats. Yeah, we, we saw that with the Blue Jays for about two weeks. They were striking out at crazy rates. Remember the game against Texas when they struck out 17 times? That was right at the beginning of this second half, if you will, right after the All Star break. Just nothing happens. Just missed downstairs. Now it's a full count. Corcoran, the catcher, is at first. Valencia will back up behind him. Jenkins is the right hander. Luke is the left hander. Double barrel action for the Blue Jays. Full count, two outs. Valencia holding the runner on now, and there goes Corcoran. The ball is hit into center. That is a graveyard here at Minute Maid Park. Long fly ball to center. The Astros get a single, but stranded runner. We're going to the eighth in a 1 1 game. Reyes will start things off. You tomorrow on Sportsnet One, you can see the Yankees and the Red Sox. It all starts at 4 p.m. East Coast time, 1 o'clock Pacific time. Shane Green goes to the mound for the Yankees against Alan Webster for the Red Sox. The Sitco sign, they moved it from Fenway to here in Houston. How clever they are down in that truck, huh? I tell you what, nobody expected Shane Green to be starting against Alan Webster when this season began. In August, Yankees and Red Sox. Nothing to play no. for almost. Maybe they were going to start for Paul Tuckett and Scranton Wilkesbury, <laughs> but not in the big league. There are the standings as we speak. The Yankees lose, the Blue Jays are behind the Orioles. This has popped up over near the Astros. The Orioles have won tonight, so the Blue Jays are currently two games back in the East. The Orioles beat Seattle two to one. Way and Chen picks up the win. Or he's pitching well. Yeah, we get to see those Orioles when we get back home. 
I want to remind you that all starts on Tuesday, August 5th, the three game series against Baltimore. And then right after the Orioles, how about a little Tiger action for you? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, a three game series against the Tigers, and that'll feature David Price on Sunday, August 10th, pitching against the Blue Jays. Blue Jays need a base runner. We're in the eighth. It's a 1 1 game. Top of the order. Reyes, Cabrera, and Bautista. Reyes hits it high to left field. Hose running over into the corner in front of the scoreboard and makes the catch. Reyes just missed it. I thought he had enough to get it into the first row. He turned on that pitch, hit it straight up in the air, high and deep down the left field, but not enough. Reyes just misses a home run. The Bo Porter is out. Darren Downs does his job. He retires all three batters he's faced tonight. He will talk to his catcher on the way out. Good job by the veteran lefty. Now they'll turn things over to the big right hander. Jose Barris into the ball game to face Milky Cabrera when we come back. Game. He came into the game last night trying to protect the one run lead. He gave up a two out solo home run to Deanna Navarro to tie the score at four all in the sixth. There are his numbers in his 25 games with the Cubs and the Astros this season. That's when he's been around for a while. Good fastball, curveball. Veras gets Milky Cabrera and Jose Bautista. And they faced it off before in the past. Surprised that they didn't keep Melky on the right side because he's a better hitter from the left side. Interesting point. But they wanted to keep him away from the Crawford boxes. Keep him in the big part of the field, center and right. Melky Cabrera, 14 home runs on the season. One out. Slow breaking ball as Ferris jumps a hit. 315 down the left line. That's why they don't want Melky batting right handed. The Crawford box is very inviting. Short torch in left. Good fastball ties up Cabrera. Melky flied out to center against Veras last night, and there's right field, a much more challenging. Distance to hit a ball out of the yard to right. It jets out very quickly, and very deep to center field. 326 down the line. Low and two. Melky Cabrera 
is 0 for 5 against his former teammate. They both played with the Yankees. Perez came up in 2006. Played with New York until 2009. Breaking ball lifted into center. Mariznik moves back a few steps and Harris records the out two down. Jose Bautista singled his first time up was robbed of a base hit on a nice play by the third baseman in the sixth inning Matt Dominguez made a good play on a hot shot one hopper. That ball he hit in the first inning that ended up being a single. He hits that ball at Rogers Center. Two run home run. It was a line drive and that's a high fence down the left field line. It's short. But it's high a lot like uh, Boston Green Monster. You got to get the ball up in the air. Well, he got a good pitch to hit. He was looking for that fastball just a bit. Away from him on the outer part of the plate. Gianna Navarro is on deck. He'd be next if Bautista can reach. Navarro homered off of Barris last night. Really tried to reach back and hump up on that one, and it was way outside. Navarro. Has a single. He's got a sack fly. He's driven in the only Blue Jays run tonight. Came in the first. Strike three. That breaking ball. There started it at Bautista's hip. It broke over the inside corner. And Veras comes out of the bullpen to close out the eighth. Bautista called out on the hook. It's a 1 1 game as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and. The game brought to you by the Sleeman Speakeasy. Only the notorious get in. Enter for your chance at Sleeman Speakeasy.ca. Brian Bowens led off the fifth inning, got on base on an error, so he's at first. They send the runner, and Jose Reyes swings through a ball, and Carlos Cooper, and they've only thrown out four base runners all year coming into this game. Guns down, Bowens, a strike him out, throw him out for the first two outs in the fifth inning. That's our play of the game. 1 1 game in the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher for the Blue Jays will be the left hander, Aaron Loop. Loop takes over for Jay Happ. In his 51st game of the season, he's been a very consistent, reliable reliever for John Gibbons. 
came into the game a couple of nights ago in Boston and stranded a couple of runners by striking out Brock Holt. 50 games now for Aaron Loop on the season. This is his 51st, three and two of an ERA under three. Gregorio Petit, the shortstop, is over two. He goes after the first pitch and hits it high and deep to left and gone. Petit, with his first home run of the season, has given the Astros a 2 1 lead. First home run. Tell you what, I didn't see that coming on the first pitch. Second home run of the season allowed by Aaron Loop. Fastball inside. He just dropped the head of the bat on it. That's his first big league homer. Right there, and it comes in a big spot here in the eighth inning. Leading off first pitch from Aaron Loop. He unties it. Two one ball game. First big league home run. Couldn't come at a better time for Petit. He is 29 years old. He's waited a long time for that. This is his first time <laughs> in the big league since 2009. He had knocked that smile off of his face after that one. Oh, they out two. He goes out there at first pitch, and he hits it off the fence in left center. Altuve is headed for third, and Melky Cabrera's got his hands in the air. Altuve's going to circle the bases, and now they are saying two bases. Melky Cabrera had his hands in the air. That ball got stuck, and then when. Now two, they came around. The ball was sitting on the ground. Yeah, and Bo Porter's going to want a, an answer on this one. That's the crew chief, Jerry Meals, who goes out on that ball. This happened last night to Melky Cabrera. That got stuck underneath the padding. Watch it. Right underneath the padding, and that should be out of play. I don't know how it got kicked back into play. Maybe now, somebody in the bullpen kicked it back out. It was lodged under the padding, and that's what Jerry Mayo is saying. It doesn't matter. But there you see that gap underneath the padding. That ball bounced and went underneath that padding. But then as it was sitting there, watch the ball. Milky said the ball's under the padding. That's out of play. And then <laughs> <laughs> almost on cue, it rolls out. Milky probably felt like kicking it back under that yeah. padding. By then it's too late, but it looks like it's going to be a ground rule double. But Cabrera, knowing once a ball disappears under padding, you just throw your hands up. Umpires will rule it a dead ball. So Altuve has his first hit of the series. His 31st double of the season. Grossman shortens up to bunt, takes it outside. Luke gave up a home run and a double on two pitches. Robbie Grossman at the plate shortens the bun again and jabs at it and runs it foul. Chad Jenkins has been up for a couple of innings and he is ready if needed. Chris Carter, the big power hitting right handed hitter, is up next, and then Matt Dominguez, another righty. And if they are successful in sacrificing this runner over third base, you need a strikeout. Strikeout or a pop up. There goes the runner. The third, the third is short as Tyson was in anticipating the bunt. Once he saw the throw from Navarro, he had to make sure he catch, catches the ball. 43rd steal. He, he's, got to, he's got to come in. You can see he's taking a quick look, takes a couple of steps, and then tries to get back. Heads up play, I think, by Altuve to pick up that stolen base. Reads that that third baseman's in. And an easy steal. 
Two and one. Now three and one. Infield on the grass. Blue Jays are down two to one. There's a fly ball to right. That'll score a run. Bautista makes the catch. Altuve tags and jogs home. Second run of the inning. Grossman with his 20th RBI of the season picks up Altuve from third. Productive stolen base by Altuve at third base. That was a heads up play to get the third base less than two outs and he is cashed home on that long sacrifice fly. Well the Astros have taken a 3-1 lead. Aaron Luke came into the ball game. First pitch he threw. He gave up a home run to Petit. They've added a run. Houston leads 3-1. Chad Jenkins coming on. by the 2014 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car, 16 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Assigned to a minor league contract this offseason, just brought back up to the major leagues last Friday. His first major league action since 2009. So what does Gregorio Petit do? Homer for the first time in his big league career, snapping at 1-1 tie or drive of the game. And then right after that, after the petite home run, Altuve doubled. He stole third and scored. The extra run, Chad Jenkins to Chris Carter. It's a foul ball. Jenkins has been on a real shuttle back and forth between Triple A Buffalo. This is his 16th appearance of the season. Sinker slider. What you're going to get from Chad? He'll throw you strikes. Thomason with a nice play on a tricky hop. Throws out Carter two down and when that sinker is working you're going to get a lot of ground balls. Nice play by Tolleson. Stays back on that in between hop. You got to play deep respecting that power in between hop. Snags it and then makes a strong throw over to first base. Matt Dominguez 0 for 2. Breaking ball missed inside. This is the fifth stint for Chad Jenkins, and he has been back and forth. Pitched in 18 games for Buffalo, including four starts. He's only allowed a run in just three of his 15 big league appearances. But he was a victim of numbers oftentimes when he was sent back. There's always one guy on a team every year, isn't there, who has to do that? Get on that shuttle. Up and down. Missed with that pitch. 
Now three and one. On the ground. Reyes at short. In time, Jenkins comes on and retires the two batters he faced, but the Astros take the lead. Gregorio Petit had 21 home runs and over a thousand games in the minors gets his first big league homer tonight. Government Digital Journal with the Sony Smart Band. Get yours at Rogers today for just $24.99 when you upgrade or switch to select new Android phones on a two year share everything plan. Check it out, the Sony Smart Band. Check it out at Rogers today. Well, the Jays got some work to do. They trail by two in the ninth as they will deal with the closer, Chad Qualls, the loser in last night's game. Yeah, Blue Jays saw Qualls last night and gave up the home run to Reimold in the ninth inning. 335 earned run average. He's 11 for 14 in save opportunities. Also allowed seven earned runs over his last three appearances, covering just two and a third inning. Walls doesn't throw that hard. He's got the sinker, he's got the slider. He's very savvy. He's been around a long time. Janet Navarro will step in to start things off for the Blue Jays in the ninth. Navarro's had a good night again at the plate. He's one for two with the sacrifice fly. He has the only RBI for the Jays. Came way back in the first inning. The Blue Jays, they've had some runners on base and they just haven't been able to punch them through. This is a fly ball to center. Marisnik, he can cover some ground. He gets there and retires. Navarro, now it's time for a preview of what's coming up next on Connected. Here's Ken Reed in the Long Cosmo. That's coming up right after this game. So make sure you stay tuned. Nolan Ryan will 0 for 3. In a home runoff calls last night. It was the game winner in his second homer of the night. It'll tap her to third. Matt Dominguez bare hands it and missed it. So Rymold's aboard. He has an infield hit. He was playing deep. He saw the two home runs leave the bat off of Rymel last night, so he's playing deep and he just misses the ball. That's the perfect spot where you want that ball if you're a third baseman and you've got a bare hand at something right there. It's going to bounce right into your palm or your hand. And now the tying run comes to the plate. Kobe Erasmus has singled in three trips tonight.
Rasmus faced Qualls and struck out in the ninth last night. His only at bat of the game. He came on as a defensive replacement in the seventh. They have given up their share of home runs. This bullpen. One now would be real nice. Rasmus has a home run against Quills. He's three for six with a long ball. Breaking ball down in the dirt. Blue Jays have out hit the Astros six to five, but the Astros have a three one lead. Rasmus strikes out. Good sinking fastball from Paul. Tough to get that ball in the air. Sinking down and away from Colby. And it comes up empty. They've given up 39 home run. That's the most in the American League for a bullpen. But you're not going to get that ball airborne right there. Valencia struck out in the ninth to start the inning against Quartz. Got him on a slider. There's that slide. There it is right there. He's got to figure out a way to get on against the veteran here because you got some home run power on deck now. Juan Francisco has grabbed a bat. He's come out on deck. Valencia has got to reach. Another slider. I think the fastball is just for show right now. Here's big Juan Francisco on deck. He's going to want to try and get him out with a breaking ball. Well, he threw that fastball and put it in a perfect spot. The Jays are down to their last strike. Balls wanted that one. Chris Conroy didn't like it. Two balls and two strikes. And the ball all night. Off the plate. Way outside. That slider missed badly. A full count. Runner at first doesn't mean much. Now they're trying to get the pitcher's attention. Singleton backs up. Rymo will be off on the pitch. Three, two, two outs. Strike three, call. Jan Cross strikes out a pair after the infield hit Gregorio Petit his first big league home run the game winning RBI in a 3 1 Astros win. Jay half pitched a heck of a ball game and deserved better Jay pitched seven innings gave up three measly hits in one -er run Blue Jays had a golden opportunity early in this game they couldn't push one across they got one in the first inning and that was it against the Astros offensively.